Hi there, I'm Anya from Peony and Time, and I'm so excited to share today's video with you. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to make the Astoria cowl. Um, this was something I designed a couple years ago, and I've been meaning to get the pattern out there. Um, I had several really sweet requests for it, um, and just, you know, life has gotten in the way. So. Here it finally is. All right, so in this video, I walk you through step-by-step step how to make this cowl using um, Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, which is one of my very favorite yarns. I love it. But you can also make it in any size six bulky weight yarn. The original one that I made was this red one, and this was made out of Loops and Threads Cozy Wool, which is also a size six bulky weight. Um, Anyhow, but I wanted to try it doing using um, the Lion brand Thick and Quick because, like I mentioned, it's one of my very favorite yarns to work with. Thoughts about both of them. The Loops and Thread Cozy Wool um, is probably a little softer, a little bit squishier, and drapes maybe a little bit better, I would say, than the, um, the Lion brand yarn, but I also did notice that it tends to stretch. <laughs> so um, if I were making it again using the Loops and Threads Cozy Wool, I would make it significantly shorter. Like I'm talking about like maybe like 12 inches shorter than, um, than I made this one because it started out just the right size, but it has, it stretched a lot. So um, I would take that into account when you're deciding what you want to do for yours. The Lion Brand one, as you can see, just has like a little more structure, tends to hold the shape a little bit better. It's not quite as um, soft and drapey, but I think that's really fun too. So it just kind of depends on what you're going for. So yeah, just take those things into account when you're deciding what you want to use. But yeah, any size six bulky weight will be just fine. Um, all right, so yeah, this really is such a fun cozy cowl. As you can see, it's kind of, it's kind of very large, larger than what I usually wear for cowls and scarves, but it's so fun. Like I love the gigantic buttons and I don't know, it's just kind of fun to have something that's a little bit different, a little bit oversized. Um, and one of the things I really like about it is that it does dress up or down really easily. So here, obviously I've got it just with like a jean shirt. Um, and so it's, does casual really well. I've also used it to be a little bit dressy before. Um, so this red burgundy, it has such like a cute classic look to it. And so I wore it over one of my little black dresses one time and it totally was adorable and worked. So yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> About the pattern, one of the things that I love about it is I really like classic designs that are simple. And so as you probably noticed, most of this super long scarf cowl is just straight up garter stitch. So all you're doing is knit stitch after knit stitch, which is super easy. And that's one of those fun comfort food projects, which is really great. Um, the only thing that is slightly tricky is that it has, it does have buttons and then of course, buttonholes. But I would like to say, if you are a beginner and you haven't done buttonholes before, don't even sweat it. They're actually surprisingly easy. So don't even worry about it. Just maybe you can like rewind and watch that part a few times if you need to, but yeah, you can totally handle it. Just take it nice and slow and it, you'll be great. And really that's about it. So yeah, let's just go ahead and get started. All right, so for this project, you are going to need three skeins of a size six super bulky yarn. I love Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick, and so that is what I decided to use. For the red one that I showed you earlier, um, I used Loops and Threads Cozy Wool. Okay, so then you need one pair of US size 17 knitting needles. And yes, that is larger than what's technically called for on a size six bulky. I just wanted it to be just a little extra, extra <laughs> large. So yeah, I'm going with the size 17 needles. Um, obviously a pair of scissors and a darning needle, always a must with any knitting project. And then you need two buttons that are um, an inch and a half across. I'm just using like a basic, um, I think it's a, made out of coconut. So that's kind of fun. And I just found these are available at um, both Michaels and Walmart. Um, a regular sewing needle and then just some nice sturdy thread to attach your buttons. All right so you're gonna take your size 17 needles and go ahead and cast on 20 stitches. And I'm using the long tail cast on method because that's my favorite. If you aren't familiar with or don't remember how to do the long tail cast on method, I'll put a link in the description below to my short video tutorial on how to do that. So I cast on 20 stitches. Next, I'm just going to do a basic knit stitch all the way across this row.
All right, so I did my basic knit stitch all the way across this row. So the beauty of this pattern is it is a beautiful basic garter stitch, which just means that all you're gonna do is knit on the right side and the wrong side rows. So I am just going to continue doing knit row after knit row, um, either until it measures about 63 inches. That's what I did on my last one. or until you're about two inches from your desired length. And that's when we'll put the buttonholes in. Um, and if you're a beginner, don't worry. You can totally handle the buttonholes. It's not as difficult as it looks. Okay, um, another fun thing about this pattern is that this can be whatever length you want it to be. So if you're knitting along, I would just start measuring if you want this a little bit shorter. I would just keep on checking periodically and trying it on, seeing how far you want it to wrap around, how bulky you want this to be. This can be as small or as large of a cowl as you would like it to be. It's all up to you. So just keep on knitting as you go. Um, try it on, wrap it around a couple times, check it out in the mirror, and when you feel like you're just a couple inches away from as long as you'd like it to be, then stop and we'll put in the buttonholes. All right, so for now, let's just keep on knitting. All right, and then once you reach the end of your first skein, knit it up a good amount there. We'll grab the next skein and add that right in. All right, and then you're just gonna keep on knitting until you have used up this skein as well. And then when you get to the end of your second skein, bring in your third. And again, like I said before, there are no hard and fast rules. This is your cowl, so you can make it whatever length you want. The one that I'm making is just a really nice, um, chunky, bulky cowl. It's gonna wrap around twice and have just a good amount of bulk to it. You can see though, like with two skeins, this is already quite long. Like, check all that out. <laughs> so that's already a lot. Um, and I would just definitely encourage just Wrap, um, try putting it on, wrap it around your neck, take a look in the mirror, um, see how long you're comfortable with, how long you want it, um, what you feel like fits well into your style. So yeah, make this just the way you want it. But for the one that I'm making, I'm going to make it extra bulky. So I'm going to go ahead and add in this third skein of yarn and keep on knitting. Alright, so I've knit until this is about 63 inches long. I still have like a good chunk of my skein left. It's maybe, I've used up more than half of it, I think. Um, but that's all the longer and bulkier I want this cowl to be. Um, so yeah, you can do it till 63 inches, or like I mentioned, just keep on trying it on and um, go to until it's just about two inches short of, of the overall length that you would like for your cowl. Okay, so now we are going to put in the buttonholes. We're gonna put two in, one about right here, one about right here. If you have never done buttonholes before, don't panic. It's not as intimidating as it sounds. Um, we'll just go slowly, take it one step at a time, and you'll be surprised at really how simple they are. But feel free to watch this over several times. There's nothing wrong with having to pull it out and do it over again. So, to start with, we are going to knit in four stitches. Great, okay, so we knit in four stitches. Now I'm going to bring this yarn to the front of the work and then slip one stitch purlwise. Now I'm gonna bring this yarn to the back of the work and that just reinforced the first part of our buttonhole. Then I'm gonna slip one more stitch purlwise and then I'm gonna bring this, uh, this first slip stitch over top of that one and bind off one stitch. I'm gonna do that one more time, slip one more stitch purlwise, bring this one over the top. So now I just um, bound off two stitches. You can see kind of a little gap there. That's what that's supposed to look like. Okay, now I'm going to slip this stitch back onto the left needle and then I'm just going to turn this work around. 
All right. All right, so this is what that's gonna look like at this point. Um, you want to bring your yarn to the back. And next, we are going to cast on three stitches. However many stitches you cast off for a buttonhole, you want to cast on one extra stitch. Okay, so since we cast off two, we're gonna cast on three, yarn to the back, and then I'm gonna stick this needle just between these two stitches. It's not going in or under any stitches, just right between. Okay, and then I'm gonna bring this yarn around and bring it right through. And then I'm gonna pull this up and slip that onto the end of that first needle, and then we just made a stitch. Okay, one note here. Um, it's easy for these, um, it's easy for stitches cast on this way to become a little tight, but with this bulky yarn, I like to err on the side of being a little tight. Otherwise, you can end up with kind of a sloppy loop back here on that side of your buttonhole just because of how bulky the yarn is. So I don't mind struggling through kind of a couple tight stitches um, to get a more smooth and sleek finished product. So. Okay, so we cast on one stitch. Now we're going to repeat that same pattern, putting it right, this needle right between those first two stitches. Pass that around, pull that back through, pop that on the end, and then again, put it between those two stitches. Pull that yarn through, and then pop that on the end of that left needle. Great, so we just made three new stitches right there. We're gonna turn this work back around to the other side. All right, I'm gonna bring this yarn to the back, and then, all right, so I'm gonna slip this first stitch on the left needle over to the right needle, and then I am gonna pass this next stitch right over top of it. Like I said, they are a little tight. Right. And there, you just completed your first buttonhole. You can see it right down there. You'll be able to see it better after you knit a couple rows. Um, and then just double check. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Yep, we still have the correct number of stitches. Perfect. All right, so now we're gonna knit seven more stitches. All right, so I just knit seven more stitches, and now I'm gonna do the same process all over again. So, bring that yarn to the front, slip one stitch purlwise, bring that yarn to the back, reinforcing that beginning of the buttonhole, slip one more stitch purlwise, bring this guy over the top, and then again, slip a stitch purlwise, bring that guy over the top. So you've just cast off two stitches, Replace that stitch back onto the left needle and then turn your work around. Great. Bring that yarn to the back. There we go. That's what it's looking like at this point. Okay, and then we're going to create three new stitches just like last time. So again, put the right needle between those two stitches. Pull that yarn through making sure that it's tight enough that you're not getting a big sloppy loop on the back. Put it on the end of that needle and do that two more times. And a little, little large there. Okay, great. So we just created three new stitches, one, two, three. We're gonna turn this back around. There we go. That's what it's looking like at this point. Bring the yarn to the back. Slip one more stitch purlwise from that left needle. Separate your stitches so you know what you're grabbing. <laughs> and then grab, grab this stitch here, pull it over top. And then knit the rest of your stitches. Yep, three stitches left to knit there. Okay. 
And let's check it out. Again, count just to double check you have the correct amount of stitches. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. Perfect! And now I'm going to knit three more rows and then we're going to bind off. Alright, so I knit three more rows. You can kind of sit and you can see the buttonholes there. There's one, there's the other one. Looks great. And now we are all done and ready to bind off. So just a normal bind off. If you don't know how to do that, I'll put a link in the description box below to my tutorial on how to cast off. And again, just not too tight, not too loose. Alright. And now we'll just trim off this end. Looks good. And then we'll just pull this right through there. Hooray! And now we're done, except for that dreaded task of weaving in the ends. Grab your tapestry needle. Maybe grab another cup of coffee and just power right through weaving those ends in. Just go back and forth a few times through some stitches. And you can call it good. Great. And then you'll just go back through your project, find places where we added in the new skeins and then that little tail from the very beginning just weave in those ends and then next I'll show you how to attach the buttons all right so those ends are all woven in Buttonholes are made. Ah, get out of there. Next step, let's sew on the buttons. All right, so for the buttons, I have my buttons here. I grabbed just some basic brown thread. This is nice and sturdy and will kind of blend into this oatmeal color pretty well, I think. So yeah, so I've already threaded my needle. Um, so here are the ends. This is the end with the buttonholes right here. And then, um, so I have this laying flat. So this is the right side it's just laying flat all the way around. So how this lines up is that this is going to be wrapped around your neck twice or however many times you decide to do it for yours. And then this is just going to lay across this corner just like that. So I like to put the first button right on the corner here because if it's right on the corner, you're gonna have less of a chance of one of these ends poking out past here, past the front. And um, cause I, just, I prefer for everything in the back to just stay nice and hidden. Okay, yeah, so we'll just go ahead and place our first button here right on the corner and just go ahead and sew it right on. Alright, so just keep on sewing this on until you feel like it's nice and sturdy there. I throw on a few more loops than I really need to, um, just because I'd rather put in a little extra work and not have them fall off. I just hate re-sewing buttons back onto to garments. So yeah. Um, anyhow, so then after you've um, sewed that on, just make a couple knots and tie that off and we'll move on to the second one. and then just trim that thread off and boom you have your first button so you can go ahead what I like to do is go ahead and just button that one all right and then my super scientific method is just to line up where that buttonhole is gonna be and looks is gonna be about right there so yeah, so we'll drop that button right there, thread the needle with some fresh thread, and sew this one on. And then when you're done with that button, 
look strong enough, just go ahead and tie off this one as well. All right, and there we go. So those are both able to, um, to button nicely, the project's able to lay flat, and you may have noticed, I like to make sure that, like this isn't a big deal, but I do like to make sure oh, that the um, holes in the buttons are both pointing the same way. Yeah, and on this one I have it like going vertically here. So yeah, and then go ahead and try this on because you are done. All right, thanks so much for joining me. I hope that you enjoyed this pattern tutorial and that it was clear and helpful for you. As always, if anything was a little bit unclear or you need a little more help, feel free to leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to get back to you. And if you do happen to make this cowl, I would love to see it. So tag me in your Instagram photos, find me over at Peony and Time. So yeah, thanks so much for joining and I hope you have a fantastic day. See you next time.